There is one sin that slavery committed against me, which I never can forgive. It robbed me of my education. James W. C. Pennington, 1849 In the United States, throughout the duration of slavery, and even after its abolishment, African Americans were discouraged from achieving an education. James Pennington, a fugitive blacksmith from Washington County, Maryland, believed that of all the sins slavery had committed against him, being robbed of his education was the greatest. The injury is irreparable, he declared. To Pennington, education was crucial to freedom, a message that resonates today. Despite legal and logistical barriers, Pennington created opportunities for himself to become educated, even while he constantly feared his status as a fugitive slave would be discovered. Even while living in slavery, Pennington took advantage of every chance he might have to acquire knowledge and skill. Assigned responsibilities as a blacksmith, it allowed him to become acquainted with the figures on the common mechanics square. According to the runaway ad placed in local newspapers by his owner, Frisbee Tilgman, Pennington could also read and possibly write. Pennington escaped Rockland, Tilgman's wheat plantation located outside of Hagerstown, Maryland, on the night of October 28, 1827. He headed for the Pennsylvania border. Once there, Pennington received instruction from a Quaker family who asked about his education. His reflection on that moment is heartbreaking. I now began to see, for the first time, the extent of the mischief slavery had done to me. Twenty-one years of my life were gone, never again to return, and I was as profoundly ignorant, comparatively, as a child five years old. This was painful, annoying, and humiliating in the extreme. Rather than become discouraged, though, Pennington dedicated himself to study. Arithmetic and astronomy became his favorite subjects. Each time he moved to avoid detection or capture, he continued his education. At one home where he took refuge, he drew rude maps of the solar system and diagrams illustrating the theory of solar eclipses. Pennington was driven by the need to keep moving, physically and intellectually. Now that he was free, he felt he must adventure in search of knowledge. And so he did. He moved to New York and then to Connecticut, and he traveled to England. He took classes at Yale and received an honorary doctorate degree in divinity from the University of Heidelberg in 1849. He had hoped to receive a degree from Yale, but the university refused to recognize the intellectual accomplishments of an African American. He published a number of books, including his own memoir in 1849, all while he was still a fugitive slave. How was Pennington able to reach such high levels of achievement and learning while a fugitive? He risked his life and his freedom each time he pursued education. There are many threads in Pennington's story, but he believed the most important thread, holding together all of the other aspects of his life, was his determined and successful effort to become well-educated. Many today take education for granted. Education requires economic and personal sacrifice. Some argue that the costs are too high. But many recognize that education is the key to freedom. Pennington fought to overcome the legal and social obstacles in his way. Slavery, after all, had committed a great sin. It robbed me of my education. The injury was irreparable. Pennington did not allow that injury to define him. And his life testifies to the value of higher learning.